Well, for this session, we have uh, Amrit Sarkar from Lucidworks. Uh, Amrit is an active Apache Lucene and Solar community member uh, and currently works on running search based applications on Kubernetes. Uh, today, Amrit will be talking about comparing various monitoring and analytics tools for solar ecosystem running on Kubernetes. Hope you enjoy this session. Um, over to you, Amrit. Um, thank you, Anshan. Um... I am just sharing my screen to get started with. Here we go. All right. I hope everyone is able to see, uh, see my screen and my voice is audible. So welcome to ApacheCon at home. It's good to be back after a year break. Um, all the other tracks have one such Kubernetes discussion. And this is the one for this track. Uh, we will be covering how to monitor Apache Solar and the auxiliary components when hosted on uh, Kubernetes. So I work as an engineer in the cloud operations team at Lucidworks, and we worked on putting Apache Solar with DevOps automation, smart auto scaling, and backup features on the cloud in the last few months. Apart from that, I am fascinated by the work done in deep learning space with respect to information retrieval. The intention of this talk is to promote solar adoption on cloud uh, with Kubernetes specifically. So the agenda will be straightforward. Uh, we will discuss how to run solar on Kubernetes from a high level. We won't go into the implementation details. A glance at inbuilt monitoring capabilities of solar. Uh, following, we move on to discuss some open source tools and one commercial offering for monitoring and logging Kubernetes clusters when we host them on Kubernetes. So at past years at ApacheCon, we have discussed deployment of Solar Cloud and complementary services at scale in great detail. Uh, the open source community of Lucene and Solar have already built new exciting features to make the job much easier for us, but still there is a great deal of micromanagement involved. Like migrating between versions, uh, expand cluster dynamically or having multiple clusters in a different region to counter a single point of failure, uh, developers and DevOps needs to be on point. There is a need of an R for a potential manager we can, which can accommodate such nuances and Kubernetes uh, can help us do that. So Kubernetes is an orchestrational tool a system used for running and coordinating containerized applications across cluster of machines. Kubernetes maximizes capacity by logically and efficiently distributing containers. Uh, based on the demand, live traffic, more data, data segregation, the machines can be scaled up or it can be scaled down. Moreover, it makes sure the processes we configured keeps on running and healthy most of the time. Kubernetes does all of this without any micromanagement. So now we will just jump right into the discussion of how to host Solar Cloud on Kubernetes. So first of all, Solar Cloud needs Zookeeper Ensemble for management of configurations and cluster state information. Zookeeper processes in Kubernetes terms pods are hosted via stateful set. A stateful set creates pods in a unique order like ZK0, ZK1, and so on. Uh, these Zookeeper pods are attached with persistent volume, which is um, which is the, I'm like, there is a reason for it. So if one of the Zookeeper pod crashes due to various reasons, an exception out of memory or a machine got corrupted, uh, Kubernetes will spin another Zookeeper pod uh, on the available node and due to its unique identification, which is ZK0, 1 and so on, same persistent volume gets attached to it. Um, a Zookeeper pod is exposed via two types of services a headless one for each pod for internal communication within the ensemble and uh, a standard one to expose to other services and application. A unique Zookeeper ensemble string generated from this module is configured in our solar setup. On the similar lines with Zookeeper, 
Solar is hosted with stateful set template for similar reasons. Solar cluster is exposed to two services, a headless one for internal communication and, uh, and an, a general one to expose it to other services and application. And finally, uh, the solar module is exposed to general traffic with either a load balancer or an ingress. The big downside of load balancer, which is a cloud provider based, is that each solar service you exposed with a load balancer will get its own IP address. And you have to pay for a load balancer per exposed service, which can get pretty expensive. For ingress, you can specify custom root names and host names to set up services. And if you're running number of solar nodes, ingress makes it much more convenient. I have abstracted great deal of implementation details from a node discovery mechanism to service discovery nomenclature. So please uh, check out um, talks which has been done in various conferences at the past to get the gist of it. So to get started with Kubernetes, uh, there is no better than uh, Google Cloud Platform where you can create solar clusters on GKE in few minutes. Uh, Lucidworks have open sourced the Helm chart for deploying solar cloud clusters on Kubernetes. A Helm chart is a baseline module uh, which can be configured easily to create deployment YAML file. Yeah, so after downloading the chart, we need to execute the following two Helm commands from command line. Uh, which ensures to download all dependencies if linked to the current chart. In this case, for solar, Zookeeper chart will be downloaded. A uh, Helm template command will generate the respective deployment YAML file. And following, we execute a kubectl, the Kubernetes command line tool command, which will interact with the Kubernetes clusters hosted on the GCP and deploy the respective services and uh, stateful sets. So this is a typical solar cluster um, default running on Kubernetes with three Zookeeper pods, creating the ensemble, two solar pods, and a respected services, a headless service, and a standard service with an IP. And the persistent volumes on which these uh, deployment sets are uh, running are hosted on SSDs, which is solid state drives. So we can deploy multiple solar cloud clusters within a single Kubernetes cluster. All the resources, configurations, pod, services, persistent volume definition can be isolated from one another via different namespace. Uh, resources in different namespaces can still talk to each other via definite discovery mechanism if there is a requirement. So when we set up our solar cloud on Kubernetes, Though Kubernetes is adding ton of exciting management capabilities, we are adding another layer to our search architecture. It is fairly important to know and understand the advantages, limitations, saturation level of the services, and how one is affecting another. From a query perspective, uh, we need to reach a baseline metric for our response time to put a design and effort in place so that we can improve in the future. So let's look at first that what we actually need while we want to monitor Apache Solar ecosystem on Kubernetes, right? So we can grill down to some definite points. Do we have inbuilt support for retrieving and utilizing solar metrics? Now engineers working on solar knows that emits valuable metrics from solar cloud specific to solar core specific. Further, uh, integration with Kubernetes internals will be a huge advantage. Kubernetes hosts a service called kubestate metrics, which emits internal status metadata information about the cluster. One of the core requirements of a monitoring is what caused my solar applications to be slow, which component is responsible for it. We generally use parameter debug equal to timing with our query to identify the component taking the maximum time. Is there a better way to perform diagnostics? So log analytics is extremely important aspect to diagnose and understand application behavior. Ease of reading, filter through, or potential for correlating logs of different services or of your architecture can be also a huge plus. So does the monitoring applications we have chosen uh, integrates with the other open source or third party monitoring logging applications or not? Uh, do we have a rough list of actual pressure points of solar cluster. 
when we say the application is not performing to its potential or throwing exceptions and errors do we have a mechanism to notify the concerned engineers or devops that such an event has happened by raising an alert and then finally can our monitoring application predict a future failure based on a pattern it can be an artificial intelligence based or it can be based on a simple basic mathematical analysis so uh, let's look at first what's available in solar out of the box right so solar includes a developer api and instrumentation for the collection of detailed performance oriented metrics throughout the life cycle of a solar service now each group of related metrics uh, is managed via a metric registry uh, solar supports uh, such these uh, registries with a, uh, from a higher level that is jvm jetty node and core and open tracing uh, is also being introduced in the recent version which is an api and infrastructure uh, in place for distributed tracing uh, we can profile and monitor applications especially built within the microservices architecture uh, you can track a particular request with its ring identifier to pinpoint causes of failure and what causes the poor performance in technical terms it allows developer to add instrumentation to their application code so open tracing api uh, was integrated with solar in the version 8.2.0 last year uh, thanks to command dot uh, user can utilize a jaeger contrib module called solar jaeger tracer configurator to set up Jaeger monitoring tool as a backend. Jaeger is a very popular uh, distributed tracing system open sourced by Uber. Uh, in version 8.2.0, uh, basic tracing for outbound communications on querying and indexing was introduced uh, with potential for adding tracing into overseer operations and collections API in later versions. Uh, there has not been much work being done after the initial release, but there is a huge potential there. So here is a typical uh, trace of a post request indexing to solar. Uh, we have two solar nodes running with on ports uh, 50674 and 50675. A post request received by node 1 spends 300 milliseconds simultaneously with node 2, while node 2 spends another 200 milliseconds potentially for writing it to the disk. In, an, in a similar manner, you can trace a query request and witness time spent on processing spell checker, highlighter, and other components. So, so we have to start our discussion of monitoring applications with Prometheus, which has an extremely smooth integration with Kubernetes. Uh, the Helm chart for generating the deployment YAML is stated is available on the stated link. To make the integration excellent, as I stated, Prometheus operator was added in Helm charts which provides easy monitoring of Kubernetes deployment and services, along with man managing Prometheus, Alert Manager, and Grafana. It is based on a service monitor, a custom resource definition, to abstract configurations we need for a target application or service. So this is a typical service monitor, which will match label stated, here app column solar, and Prometheus operator will does, will does rest of the work of retrieving the metrics. So a Kubernetes Helm command is utilized here to deploy the Prometheus operator, which installs the operator, cube state metrics, and complementary pods required for effective metrics retrieval and alert manager. In this case, you can see on the right hand side, we have these five or six pods running and the respective services running, which will do the, uh, which will do the work. Um, here we can see in the targets, um, Prometheus fetching and display, displaying API endpoints and corresponding information from all Kubernetes service, specific services like control manager, DNS, scheduler, API, etc. Uh, the operator also installs an alert manager, which is complemented by Prometheus, uh, stating errors and warnings sorted by recency for a user to look at. You can filter on those alerts and group them on a criteria for a better visualization. This is a decent tool to get started with alert mechanism, and it has the potential to deliver more. So, uh, 
So we know Prometheus handles solar metrics quite well. Uh, solar Helm chart uh, discussed before has an option of integration with Prometheus via Prometheus exporter, which is part of the solar Docker image. All we need to do is to create a solar exporter YAML with parameter exporter enabled to annotations in the YAML for Prometheus to know which port it needs to connect to for scraping the metrics. It follows with updating the solar deployment YAML chart with this file, reapplying the same via kubectl command to have the changes in effect at the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, we can see solar exporter service and deployment is created. And we can verify solar exporter pod or pods running in the Kubernetes cluster with the kubectl command. So Prometheus supports all solar metrics, including stated num docs in a time series format with plenty of metrics at disposal. We need effective dashboard tool, which can complement Prometheus. And we do know what we need here. We need Grafana. So if we have not installed Prometheus operator, Grafana can be installed via Helm chart available on the stated link. Once deployed, it needs to be pointed to the Prometheus as one of its data sources. The complementary uh, solar dashboard JSON for Grafana is open sourced and available on the contrib folder on the solar application. This is the exact link to that JSON. So this is the Grafana dashboard for Kubernetes cluster metrics uh, showcasing CPU usage, memory utilization segregated by request and limits. The resource usage are available for each service and each namespace specified. You can nail down to the exact node, uh, number of pods running in that node, resource requested, and further can level down to the exact Docker container running in your Kubernetes cluster and the resource management. Prometheus operator integration provides five to six inbuilt dashboards in Grafana with respect to Kubernetes out of the box. And then we have the Grafana dashboard for solar, stating the heap sizes, overall memory consumption, uh, resource usage at the thread level, uh, request and response time series dashboard, latency, error rate, etc. Now let's look at, uh, now we're, we're done with discussing uh, the metrics, uh, part of the monitoring of the metrics uh, using open source tools. Now let's look at what's available when we do log analytics in the Kubernetes world. So FluentD is an open source data collector for unified logging layer. Now deploying FluentD agents is done with Helm tool, the chart available on the stated link. The, a daemon set in Kubernetes makes sure that a pod runs on each node of the cluster. The pods of the FluentD are deployed via daemon set such that it can scrape through uh, pod container logs on the respective node. So Kubernetes provide out of the box support for log management and respective endpoints for Stripe Drive, which is a deep monitoring tool uh, if clusters are hosted on a Google Cloud and Elasticsearch. Behind the scenes for the endpoint, FluentD logging agent takes care of the log collection, parsing and the distribution. In the um, in this talk, we are going to discuss the EFK stack altogether as it is the op truly open source uh, analytics tool available. Starting with FluentD, so this is a typical YAML configurations to set to deployment FluentD daemon pods. Now the source of the logs are set to var log containers, which has logs for all containers running in that node, and uh, we tag all those log lines, log files with raw.kubernetes.star. There are more elements to be set and FluentD configurations details them properly. Continuing the same XML formatted configuration, uh, filter the logs collected. Here we are uh, filtering logs with container name solar and Kubernetes zookeeper. So logs of these two apps are collected and rest are discarded. Further adding a label, customer extracted from existing ones. Now, this is just an example and folks using FluentD Logstash are much familiar with it. 
uh, further we transform our log files based on our solar mdcs with labels that is we extract core names shard number handler queue time hits etc and uh, finally as you can see we can set a dynamic elastic host elastic search host name uh, with labels available at the output layer uh, the solar mdc part i i have only highlighted a single format but there are two three or more formats uh, being available to you you can put it in the, as part of the solar mdc so following uh, tools um, apart from the fluentd are very uh, straightforward to be configured uh, we all are familiar with elastic search uh, the helm chart is available on the link listed and pods are deployed via stateful set similar reasons like solar to have the same volumes getting attached to the pods uh, while it gets restarted once deployed uh, the elastic search service is available at the elastic search master.namespace and the rest of the nomenclature right typically we should host more than one single elastic pod for the replication of log indexes minimal yaml configuration is required in this case just the cluster name as uh, elastic search nothing much typical up required apart from that uh there we are executing uh, elastic search query to get all docs in the log stash index once fluentd is configured properly we should start seeing log lines captured with definite labels uh recalling the solar mtc logging we enabled at fluentd we will get core status queue time etc while on the right hand side what's not captured by mdc is printed as it is it is still pretty valuable once you have kibana visualizing all of this and the final piece we have is kibana right kibana is a free and open source user interface uh, that lets you visualize your elastic search data and navigate the elastic stack Uh, the helm chart is available at the stated link the kibana pods are deployed by a deployment set such that if one pod gets killed another one can get up and just start serving the end customer or end user uh, the only configurations needed to connect kibana to elastic is the elastic service name uh, in this case based on what we have discussed so far uh, it will be elastic search master colon 9200 9200 is the port for the elastic service and there you have the kibana ui with all the label keys from solar mdc and the raw kubernetes on left navigation and the log snippets in a tree format in the main panel we'll see an example of all of this actually so uh, now let's look at what we need uh, what and when we need to be alerted while running solar on kubernetes Uh, we will start with the typical solar specific components now if you if your solar jvm nodes are experiencing constant garbage collection or high heap usage uh, multiple factors can be responsible for it you either may be faceting on a knock dock value field or maybe doing irrational wild card searches that is without the edge and gram uh, filter factory uh, you can see very high uh, memory consumption uh, heap consumption also you need to keep an eye on your latency and your error rates for your solar and zookeeper metrics of the these are the fundamentals of how your application is truly behaving if you see a very irrational pattern in your latency or error rate you need to be informed now from kubernetes perspective we need to monitor uh, cpu storage memory utilization at pod level is must both when it is under utilized or even when you are overwhelming it Uh, we should have a continuous heartbeat to solar and the zookeeper services whether they are accessible or not um the reason being kubernetes have a tendency to restart a pod or the or the and the process correspondingly with that pod which has recently failed to match the configurations provided at the time of deployment the failure for a solar pod can be due to configuration mismanagement out of memory any other unforced error and if such frequent restarts are occurring for a solar pod or pods including zookeeper you need to get an alert that something is not right 
Now, in no shape or form, this is an exhaustive list of pressure points of solar. So please feel free to add more based on your conscious and assessment. Now let's move on to discuss one of the third party applications whose pricing model is based on the volume consumed and the traffic received. Now Datadog is a SaaS based product platform to monitor applications at cloud sale, servers, databases and services. It offers drag and drop dashboards. Uh, we can receive alerts for critical issues which can be configured on various factors, outlier or anomaly detection. It can forecast issues and much more. Uh, Datadog uh, provides flexible API to access unique infrastructures, multiple SQL databases, uh, Java processes, user interface, and much more on in their architecture. The search capabilities on metrics and uh, unique events in the in entire cluster can be done. And the best part with the Datadog is its integration with uh, almost all popular open source softwares and tools available, and also with some enterprise applications too. Uh, I am in no shape or form promoting a commercial application, but we need to understand the features available to make a decision at the time of adoption. So in Datadog, we can look at each pod running in the Kubernetes cluster, monitor the CPU utilization, memory utilization in real time. In this case, we have the respective solar pods here. We have solar chain one, solar chain zero, of which um, the respective uh, CPU and memory consumption is being displayed. So keeping up with the history, we will have a demo. It's always good to look at things working uh, bare and live. So, right. So, yeah. So let's look at first that what we have set up. So um, we, I've built this um, a demo on, uh, on the LucidWorks managed search SaaS offering. So you will see some URLs for the typ some typical URLs. Please ignore that. So we have this Apache test and wiki collection, two different collections, which is hosted on our solar cloud. Um, we have Apache test with three shards, two replica each. We have wiki collection with three shards, one replica each, and so on, right? And if I can quickly go to the dashboard, uh, we are hosted with physical memory 8 GB, JVM provided around 2.9, and we have the respective other components. So let's look at first our command line of how it looks like. So this is my deployment, right? So if we can quickly come back to this, this is our uh, LucidWorks managed SaaS offering UI. Hi, here I have an ApacheCon, a cluster name called ApacheCon, hosting three nodes with storage, storage size two, and we have two collections as discussed. And if I look at the command line, we have this kget pods. I did this names, it is deployed this particular namespace. So I have three solar pods running along with the solar exporter also running. And I have the three zookeeper pods making those ex, um, ensemble. Looking at the PVC, I have my three solar uh, pods running on SSDs. Uh, while the zookeeper is running on standard, this needs to be obviously, it, this, I'm like zookeeper pods should obviously run on SSDs. This is just for demo purpose. Two services for solar, one service for exporter, and two services for zookeeper, as mentioned. So this is our solar setup, right? Now let's look at the monitoring tools. So we have deployed the data dog. This is the commercial part, the commercial application part. So we have deployed the data dog as a daemon set. So at the moment, these many data dog pods are running. So, um, on and each data dog is running on one single cluster. One sorry, one single node in the Kubernetes cluster. Similarly, in the similar lines, we also have deployed FluentD. Right, this is the open source one. So we have deployed FluentD, the Elasticsearch FluentD, again as a daemon set, and it is also running on each node. Elasticsearch cluster with Grafana, Kribana, and the Prometheus server, right, for our multi services. So these two are truly open source, while the Datadog one is the commercial one. And then we will just look at, get a feel of how exactly it looks like when we you know, set this up. So this is our Prometheus dashboard. I had to port forward because this is not exposed, uh, exposed as part of the SaaS offering. So here I'm just, uh, um, 
configuring the solar metrics one minute rate, the district one minute rate, and I'll get, um, you know, we'll get the metrics rightfully with values and so on. This is not really visually you know, intuitive. So we look at the Grafana dashboard. So this is a custom Grafana dashboard. This is not the default one which comes with solar. We, we made some changes. We tried to, you know, made it more um, like uh, user friendly and more user um, user user useful. So in this case, uh, there is an intentionally I created two collections. So we have two collections: Apache Test and Wiki. In the Wiki, I have around five hundred and fifty thousand documents. Apache Zero, and you can see we can see index size, overall update request, uh, select uh, um, request latencies. Uh, we have some T log replay counts to this for the replication factor since we have three types of nodes. So we have categorized it like say core metrics, then we have cache metrics for hit ratios, cumulative hit ratios. People who are working with solar are very familiar with these metrics. We have put them in one single panel. Then we have the JVM specific metrics, like I mentioned, the heap sizes, the GC usage, CPU load on each node, you know, defined and so on. So on the top side, you can see the labels and you can you know, go for the specific collection. You can go for a specific node and core and so on. Um, this is our JVM metrics and have oper uh, operating system specific ones with memory size, CPU time, and we have the error metrics as separate so that you can actually look that if there is an error spike, you know, you can go and just check out, okay, something's wrong is happening. So this is with the metrics part. Uh, in the logs, scenario the logs one uh, we have the kibana so we have already everything set up on the left hand side you can see we have the current date of the index which is 30th september right and i am configuring for last 15 minutes it is getting refreshed automatically uh, since our solar mdc was enabled by default on the left hand side you can see um, some very valuable labels are there so you can just go and click on a specific label and can figure out the log line from there so in this case in the app either i want to see is Zookeeper or solar, let's say I am like go for solar and then for the code type I have, uh, we have something called Apache test core, we have wiki shard one, Apache test again, different cores and so on. Here I just click on the, uh, on the app part. So now I have just filtered everything by all the log lines coming from solar. Then we have node names and exec path, the request handler, right? What exec request handler was being called and how much time it took. Let us suppose I go for collections, so admin collections, and then I can look at the log lines and can do the basic diagnosis. So these are the two things, the metrics and the, the logs part. Um, I, I, we don't have a very good alert manager with, we were not able to configure an alert manager with the, for within an open source tool. And we will discuss that in, a, in, in the next slide. Uh, further, I would like to just go over the data doc thing. Uh, since this is a commercial product, we won't be really going into what's happening. But we have just configured some dashboards that this is a dashboard for the ApacheCon um, dash um, for the ApacheCon uh, cluster. Three solar nodes running, three Zookeeper nodes running. If I look at one specific, you know, search rate, this is our search rate. I, if I click on past four years, it will start showing up for my past four sorry past four hours and so on. Um, one interesting thing I just wanted to show, uh, just hover upon this. This is the host map, infrastructure list, containers, processes. I mean, you can I mean, just uh, on a ping data dog and they can do the demo for you. So I won't do the same. Uh, one thing which we really find it useful was alert manager actually. So in this case, I mean, this is just one single example, one single alert manager example, where we are configuring if disk is running low on any of my Kubernetes cluster, on any of the solar nodes, throw me an alert. So it was this easy to um, like configure just one single monitor was enough to configure this alert for all Kubernetes clusters and all the solar clusters running on those Kubernetes cluster. So that this made it pretty easy for us. I hope this is useful. And I'll now get back to our presentation. I have just uh, one slide left. So quickly going into present review. Right, so setting up these monitoring and log analytics tools are becoming very easy as the tools are adopting to the Kubernetes space, right? The question and the respective thoughts I would like to conclude is whether to use open source tools available or buy commercial services. Uh, this is purely based on personal experience and there will surely be more factors based on yours. So I 
particularly was not able to find a good alert manager open sourced which can notify any bad event effectively via commonly used notification channels so prometheus alert manager is pretty primitive one of the reasons lucidworks adopted datadog for the managed solar sas offering for alert mechanism such that it pushes slack notifications it sends an email and it has pager duty call integration to a concerned operator within seconds if a bad event has happened and then um, do we have a resource do we have enough resources to even monitor these monitoring application we just discussed now what happens if prometheus breaks down right something bad happens with elastic search unintentional security bug uh, got introduced in alpana now the more tech stack you add to your kubernetes you you add on kubernetes the quantitative job for maintenance also increases so the final question i will conclude the session will be how critical is monitoring solar for you for your business or your use case based on that i think you can decide whether you want to buy or you want to build the monitoring stack so on that note i thank each and everyone uh, here to be part of this session i hope this was useful and encourages you to go docker and kubernetes with your solar i personally learned a lot these two days and looking forward to more i'll take questions and comments now if you guys have thank you um okay right thank you yeah uh, so the question from robert is will the helm chart work with azure absolutely so the best thing about kubernetes is it works with every uh kind of i would say uh, a cloud offering right you can deploy it on gcp kubernetes work with gcp you can build it on aws with the eks or on azure with their uh, i'm like kubernetes of kubernetes platform but they have or even if you build kubernetes on prem right kubernetes is an open source orchestration tool so you can build it locally you can even run on minikube on your local system and deploy all these kind of, um, tools and prem monitoring Uh, Shamsundar, I'm pretty sure the recording will be available after. I'm confident about that. And yeah, Fakan, um, yeah, I'm confident also that the recording will be available. And thank you, Joffrey. Thank you, Rajendra. Right. I think I have another minute or so. so I am available at Sarkar Upre Two on all social platforms: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Where you will want to reach out to me. Uh, also, we would like to talk if you are hosting Solar on Kubernetes. Maybe we can help you out in some manner. We can collaborate on that. So do let us know. Do do reach out. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Sophia. And I think I have clocked my forty minutes. Anshum, if I am right. And on that note, I'll leave the session. Thank you guys and happy learning. Bye.